Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lex and I would absolutely love it if you love this content, if you want to support me, if you want to support the channel, if you would like, share, comment, and subscribe. It helps the videos to get out there and inspires me to keep creating and overall just lets me know like, hey, this content's good. I want to see more of it. Uh, I do want to apologize in advance. I've mentioned it in a few videos, but I have been pretty sick this week. And today I feel like I'm going through the stuffiness phase of the cold. So I can like hear in my voice that I sound very stuffy. So I am sorry in advance. Also, if you are looking for the Love is Blind uh, UK video, I'm sorry. That video is going to be delayed. I've been really sick this week and... Pretty much my main priority has been making sure these Big Brother uh, like recap videos are on time because I feel like they're time sensitive. <laughs> um, so Love Is Mine UK is coming. I'm hoping to feel better this weekend. I did watch episodes one and two, so it's just a matter of literally recording. But as of right now, I think all I have in me is to do the Big Brother videos. I, I just can hear how stuffy I sound and it's driving me crazy. So anyway... Um, one last thing, I have Twitter. If you want to see my thoughts on other things, here's my Twitter. You can follow me there. There will also be a link in the description. Okay, let's get into this day because baby, big brother, big brother, this, I, I was happy. Okay, I was happy about yesterday. How yesterday went down is what I was looking for. Okay, I was very, very happy. So let's get into the uh, day 24, okay? We're going to talk about pre-eviction, and then we'll have a little bit of post-eviction talk about the new HOH. Does the new HOH even have power at this point? Um... So we start off the day with Leah, Chelsea, t -Core, Brooklyn, and Rubina all talking. They are all agreeing at this point that whoever America's nominee is, they're not going to try to vote this person out. Um, they are obviously under the impression that Tucker, like a lot of people were under the impression that Tucker was going to win and take himself off, which foreshadowing, he did. Um, now, Joseph thinks that America's nominee could potentially be Rubina. I'm going to skip that. Um, so you're not allowed to. Um, everyone's so great. I love them all. Okay, um, safe answer. <laughs> so um, America's nominee. I've made no secret about it. It's gonna be Rubina. Uh, she has no <laughs> because she's played in no HOHs. Joseph is very funny with this angle he has, where he thinks he's like the star of the show, and that like Rubina and a bunch of other people are floaters. I'm like Joseph. We literally don't see you on the show. Like I just think his perception is so off. It's not even funny. Now Rubina and Tikor are talking. They talk about how Rubina's uh, Rubina gives the update basically saying, look, Tucker never discussed with me the alliance that he wants to make with MJ. So now I don't know how to feel about that. Uh, Rubina is like, I don't understand why he'd want to work with MJ instead of me. Uh, it's just the whole thing where she's like, what's going on? And at this point, they continue to try to count the votes for Tucker and against Tucker. Uh, Angela has a camera talk. Oh, serious? Oh, oh sorry. Oh, was a little, uh, <laughs> sorry. Right. Maybe, and she is hyping it up. She wants Tucker to win the HOH. And then as she's having this camp talk, uh, Quinn just walks in. And she's like, sorry, 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 sorry. And it's so funny because Quinn says nothing. He just completely ignores her. I can definitely see them on the TV show someday putting up like that with like the funny boing boing music that they be using because that was pretty hilarious. Now, Chelsea and Rubina, they also have a conversation and they're talking about MJ and Leah. They talk about how MJ and Leah are constantly flip-flopping. You no, know, because Leah was her last night. She's like, we really need to get Kenny home. And I'm just like, just last week, you were trying to get Kenny into an alliance. Like, I'm confused. I so am I. And now all of a sudden, you want to be all up in Tucker's butt? Oh, like How they're not sure who their allegiances are with. Um, they're, now, they're talking about MJ and how she didn't consider all of the options of who could possibly win the comp. And I do agree with that because I feel like everybody thought about it one way, but there was like obviously other options for who could potentially pull out the W. Now, they both agree they cannot come to a decision of who to take out until after the competition. But, you know, 
MJ wanted Quinn to get out. That's what she had been telling people, telling Leah. And it's clear that Rubina doesn't understand that Tucker is the target. She even makes these other comments, like if it's Kenny versus Tucker, it's definitely going to be Tucker that stays. And I'm just like, Ooh, girl, you really don't realize if that man was still on the block, he was probably going home. Now, Chelsea is also talking about how MJ is all of a sudden infatuated with Tucker. And I don't know, man. Those girls, they are so... Those girls, they get so hung up on the other girls. That, like, Chelsea, Leah, MJ group, they just pick one girl and they just go in. And then they sometimes even talk about each other. Okay. So... We had the eviction episode. We'll talk about it right here, right now. Honestly, I'm sure y'all watched it on TV. Now, first and foremost, Tucker apparently was sitting on the vent during the HOH competition. That's how he was able to collect more balls quickly. And because that was never discussed in the rules as like a, a penalty or anything like that, genius. Genius. I'm not going to like genius. Tucker pulls out the W in the AI arena. We obviously find out immediately that the third nominee is Quinn. Duh. I mean, the edit made it seem that way for the casuals. Of course, all the casuals voted for Quinn. Now, Tucker wins the AI arena, leaving Kenny and Quinn on the block. And Kenny is voted out. What was it? 10 to 1 or 11 to 1. Kenny only had one vote for him. Good riddance. Honestly, I am so glad that it happened that way because at this point, Kenny was doing too much. Kenny was doing too much. He says in his little interview with Julie that he didn't realize how emotional he was going to get in the game. I'm like, Kenny, you've been saying you wanted to go home since day two. In reality, you didn't realize that you weren't going to be the top dog. In reality, you didn't take into account that you're an older guy and most of these younger guys want to pair up with other younger guys. Let's just be for real. Like that are, are younger people in the house. Um, so good riddance to Kenny. I'm glad that Quinn didn't go home or Tucker because I didn't want Quinn or Tucker to go home personally. Um, so the feeds do come back after the eviction episode. I is there cannot wear that oh, anymore? What has this been used for? Yeah, I wear that where yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me just grab a different one. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to show past your top score. In the there, for a little while, they actually ended up playing a pretty late HOH. Uh, we come back to the feeds, and T Corp, Rubina, Brooklyn, and MJ are discussing the week with Quinn's power. Cause this week will. It will. will, no matter what. No matter what, because Quinn's gonna. Yeah. I'm kind of scared. Well, we know who's the two he's gonna put up. He's gonna have to put up one more. Mm hmm. Who's the two? Angela and. Yeah. And what Tucker may do as well. Again, a lot of discussion of possibilities, different possibilities that can happen. Um, now. At some point, they discuss that they think Quinn may not use the power in order to gain trust back. And there was a few different people over the course of the night that thought that Quinn may not use the power. And I'm like, guys, he's definitely using the power. Um, so Tucker and Rubina are talking and Tucker's really cocky right now as expected. He's like, see, see, this outcome says a lot. This outcome says a lot. Look at what happened. Week five, six, seven. <laughs> In front of the mirror every time. We have like four weeks of it now. So we're going to so let you do it with us, but oh, yeah. you can do it. says a lot. So he's really on his high horse now. He's really cocky because he won and he's not going home. And he knows that a lot of people wanted him to go home, right? So Tucker, Kibo, and Tikor are also talking. And they are... Uh, Tucker tells them that MJ actually had approached them at some point and tells them... And he told them that, look, you guys are the core group that I want to be with, but... We we can possibly feel out Chelsea as well. So remember, there is this group being formed with Tucker, Kimo, t -Core, MJ, and Rubina. That's kind of like the core group that is going to be formed over there. Uh, so Kimo and Tucker also talk about how they need to be loyal to both alliances. This alliance that is unnamed, but goes on to become five points, points with a Z. Um... And they just need to be sure that they're not pulled along by Tucker. If he wins, which there's a high possibility he could. Which is the best case scenario, right? If he wins. Right. If he wins, he puts up Quinn, probably. They don't get 
get kind of like stuck in a mist. Uh, they are not sure where Leah is at. And they need to talk strategy with Rubina and Tucker because although they formed the group, they haven't all really talked strategy of what they would do. Now, they don't want Quinn uh, to get in there. And they think that the people in the new alliance, plus Quinn and Chelsea, will be most beneficial to their numbers. They have a lot of talk about how they're sitting pretty. They're kind of at the top of the house right now. Every You know, like they are kind of have a hand in, in everything. And I agree with them. Um, but they're not going to tell Quinn about this new alliance, which good because Quinn can't close his mouth. That's the biggest problem. Don't give Quinn any information that he doesn't already have because he can't close his mouth. Uh, they want to, now T4 does want to protect Chelsea, but obviously not at the cost of blowing up her own game. And T4 says if Leah wins, she is putting Rubina on the block. Now, Rubina and Tikor also talk, and Rubina says, like, look, I've tried to fix the relationship with Quinn. I've tried to kind of, like, start to mend that, because I know this week he's going he's gonna to use his HOH. Um, and she said that she told Quinn even, like, hey, I'm happy that you're still here. So, you know, obviously Rubina's trying to slide in because she knows that she's been associated with Tucker, and Tucker is someone that's not on Quinn's good side. Uh... Now, Quinn and Chemo also talk, and Quinn says, look, I'll throw the HOH if I'm sure that someone from the collective is going to win. Uh, but Quinn does not ultimately want Rubina, MJ, Angela, or Tucker to win the HOH. And Quinn tells Joseph later on in the night that he will put up Angela, Tucker, and Rubina. Those are his, those are his three nominees. Now, Joseph and T-Core, they talk as well. And T-Core says the best case scenario is that Tucker wins HOH this week so Quinn can overtake it. And then he will not be eligible to win HOH next week. So lots and lots of talk about the power, whether it will be used, who should get it. They're kind of all under the impression before the competition that Quinn will use the power. So now it's just a matter of who will win HOH because whoever wins the HOH this week still will not be eligible to play next week. At least that's their impression they're under. Because even though Quinn will hijack it, they still want to knock somebody out so they can't play HOH next week. Somebody that's not on their side. So fees go down for a little while and we come back and we find out the winner of the HOH. H is ba -ba -da -ba -da. Angela. Look, y'all. I'm telling you, Angela's resume is crazy right now. Like, say what you want. I don't care if you like her. Angela's resume is crazy right now. Insane resume. Insane resume. Angela wins the HOH. Now, obviously, it's pretty much null and void because Quinn is planning to use the power, but there is a lot of conversations after Angela wins about varying things. There's already drama in the house. We're going to get another good week. We're going to get another good week. Let's start. So Quinn is planning to have one-on-ones with everybody today. Uh, yesterday, this all happened. So he said he was planning to have the one-on-ones today. And Angela is under the impression that he may not necessarily use the power. And this is what I'm saying. There are people who do not know for sure if Quinn's going to use the power. I'm pretty sure Quinn said he's going to use the power like 100%. Now, Cedric volunteers to go up as a pawn if that means getting out Tucker to Quinn. He tells him this, and Quinn is unsure of that idea. And I'm like, why? Why do they keep volunteering to go on the block? Why do they keep volunteering to go on the block? Now, Angela and Tucker have a pretty long conversation. Thank you. Thank you. I think we put her up twice. I'm like, you're right. I called her up on the thing again. I was like, you guys were just playing. I was put up multiple times. I know. I was telling, I was telling everybody. I was like, you did it four or five times and you won. Angela says, look, you know, there, you know, she's a competitor. She, she's hyping herself up. She's gassing herself up because she won, which, you know what? Hey, good for her. Um, Angela said that she was put up twice during the competition. It sounds like it's one of those competitions where you go and then you have to pick the next person to come up after you because she was picked twice. And then there was also a debate that she had with Brooklyn a little later because she picked Brooklyn twice in a row, apparently. Uh, now... 
They discuss how Cedric is a possibility to go on the block, but there is a lack of trust for Chelsea because she was put up during that time. Uh, Angela says that. Now, they talk a lot about Quinn. Oh, they go on and on about Quinn. Uh, Angela says, look, I thought that all of the guys knew about the power. I was not aware. I thought you guys were tight like this. So he had told all of you guys about the power as well as me because I was HOH. Uh, Tucker says that at this point, Quinn is in five final twos. So he doesn't even know what's going on with him. And, um, he breaks down the plan more because Angela's still a little confused at exactly what was supposed to happen last uh, last week. So he breaks down the plan more and says, look, like I told Cedric, I take all the heat for this. Nothing was going to be on your hands. This is a plan I wanted to do. So why didn't you just do it? Now, Tucker's angle on that is ridiculous because it was not his HOH. I'm happy Tucker's here, but it was not his HOH. So I don't know. Tucker's acting very entitled, like, oh, Cedric has to do this for me and it's like no this was not your hoh sir now t and chemo also talk and at this point t feels that quinn should just use the power wipe out all three nominees just kind of get that over with there is a concern now because there's no house target because angela won hoh so she, she's not eligible and kenny is gone right so all of the people that were like the standard like let's just throw them up they're gone uh, t seems like it, uh, uh, it seems like MJ regrets using the power last week. You know, now that she notices that Angela's in power, there's no like shields. MJ seems like, oh my goodness, I should have probably used the power this week. Now, Brooklyn and Angela do have their talk after the conference, uh, competition. One of the only people that I've been honest with you the whole time. And I can guarantee you that. So that's why. So if it wasn't personal... I Honey, it. it was not personal. I promise okay. you that. At this point, I was just like, I want this too. And I. This talk is a little intense because, again, Brooklyn is obviously feeling some type of way that Angela chose her to go twice in a row during the HOH. So Brooklyn does ask Angela, hey, why'd you put me up back to back? Like, what was that all about? Angela says it was not personal, but she wanted to win very badly. She says that. Brooklyn has guarantees in the house. People like her and she does not have that same safety. And you know what? For what it's worth, Angela's right. Brooklyn's like, no, no, no. Nobody has guarantees in the house. And I'm like, Brooklyn, but be so for real. You're not on anyone's radar. You're nobody's pawn. Brooklyn is arguably in the best social game spot in this house right now. I, her social game is immaculate. Like, I really like it. <laughs> um... Angela says the girls and the guys all love Brooklyn and this was a comp that she knew she could possibly win. So that's why she kept putting Brooklyn up. Um, now Angela does guarantee Brooklyn safety, which I thought was funny. She said, all I can do is guarantee you safety this week. Um, and then says, look, but you set the tone during this. I was not the one that set the tone. I was not the one that was angry or having an attitude. You know, Ange, leave it to Ange to never take accountability for anything. But um, I think it is funny because it is very clear that Angela is not aware of how the power works. It is mentioned a little later because she also tells Tucker, like, look, this is ours. This is our HOH. This is our HOH. And Angela does not seem to understand that she's not even going to put up nominees. Apparently, Quinn has to give his nominees by 12 o'clock today. Uh, he had said that. So, I, you know, I think this is going to be a crazy week. I think this is going to be a crazy week. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. So, Tigor Quinn and Kimo are talking, and he asks, uh, Quinn asks them how he f they feel about him nominating MJ Tucker and Rubina. That's crazy, right? Um, and so tomorrow, I'm going to meet with everyone. Mm -hmm. How do we feel about me nominating Tucker, Mackenzie? Uh, he says he's going to meet with everyone one-on-one -on -one tomorrow. Now, Quinn thinks Rubina and MJ are clearly working with Tucker. Yeah, of course. Uh, he's thinking about possibly putting Cedric up as a renom if needed because Cedric volunteered. And this is a problem with people volunteering. <laughs> um, they allude to Leah not trusting Quinn, but they don't tell her exactly every single thing she said about Quinn. And they do discuss the Pentagon because... 
you know, Tikor Kimo want to know, like, hey, like, where's your standing with the Pentagon, that other alliance you told us about? Um, now, he says that he likes Cedric in Brooklyn a lot and really wants to work with them. He likes Chelsea as a person, but they barely ever talk game. And he thought Cam was the best player at one point. So Angela and Quinn finally have the inevitable conversation up in the HOH room. The beginning nominations are the, like, Both. and that's it. Yeah. Oh, so you control the very beginning? And the, and the replacement nominees And as well. the replacement nominees, yes. everything. And so I just wanted to do, like, a temp check with you and see what your thoughts were. I know Tucker took you off. Quinn first off clarifies the power because Angela's still not really aware of what it does. Now, they... Basically, Quinn asks, hey, like, are there any definites that you do not want up on the block? You know, he's playing this angle of like, like, oh, this is your HOH, Angela. I, I don't want to like just completely steamroll over. I do want to take you into account and what you possibly want. Um, now, he says, obviously, that she and Tucker are in, um, you know, Oh, he says, obviously, she knows that he would not want Tucker up uh, because they are friends now. Obviously, Tucker saved Angela, so she would not want him on the block. But he says, obviously, we are in a very public battle. So Tucker is a strong possibility. Uh, but overall, Angela does want to wait until the morning to kind of give a final answer. Um, he says his hard note is chemo because he revealed the power to chemo. He told him when he was on the block, you know, to try to guarantee him safety. He basically said, look, I told chemo when he was on the block because I wanted to tell him, look, like next week, you're going to be safe. You're going to be fine because I have HOH. Um now, Angela tries to ask who his second or third hard nose are. And he's like, come on, but you're not even giving me anything. You're not telling me anything. And Angela's like, okay, but I never told you that about the power. I never told anyone that you had the power. And he's like, that's not true, though. He's like, Tucker told me that you were the one that told him. And it's like, no. It was chemo, but for some reason he doesn't believe that. Um, and Angela's like, but that's not true. Like, I didn't, I didn't say anything. Um, and he says, well, that's what Tucker told me. That's what Tucker told me. So Joseph, Kibo, and Tikor, they also have a conversation kind of to end the night off. First off, Joseph kind of pitches a final three to them. He doesn't like outwardly say, let's be in a final three, us three. But he pitches a final three and they name themselves the Guppy. <laughs> Yeah, let's ignite the question. Because I don't want to see him go now. You know what I mean? I think him and I know he's not coming after him. We also thought he had the numbers though. Right. If, if he didn't think of them. T Gord basically says that they could keep getting the big excuse me, they can keep getting the big targets out and then, you know, they can all swim through as the sharks are like getting out the big targets. Um Joseph is talking about how he would have told uh, Tucker to use the veto on himself had he known more about the plan. But overall, they all agree they're happy that Kenny's gone. There was no real reason for him to be here. And t -Core actually feels that it is better to nominate Leah, MJ, and Rubina rather than... Or Tucker, MJ, and Leah. Sorry, I read that totally wrong. Tucker, MJ, and Leah, he obviously does not... She obviously does not want Rubina to be on the block. Um, so that is kind of where we end the night. It is very, very obvious, you know, that I think there's going to be a little bit of a storm with Quinn and Angela because my thing is... I'm wondering if Angela, I think Angela's kind of under the impression that Quinn's going to do a little bit of what she wants. And I think Quinn is going to completely go rogue and do something different. Also, Quinn could deny using the power, right? No one's going to know for sure because it's going to be a deep fake of Angela. I know this is the producers are probably mad as fuck. They were probably like, this is not what we wanted. This is not how we wanted y'all to use this twist. But OK, um, a couple of things of note before we go. So the Five Points Alliance was formed. This is Brooklyn, Chemo, Rubina, t -Core, and Tucker. They formed the Five Points and t -Core almost immediately went and spilled the beans to Chelsea about this alliance. And then Chelsea told MJ about the alliance. So there's a few people now that know about the Five Points Alliance. Um, 
Angela seemingly does not realize that she doesn't even get to do nominations. She, Quinn is going to give his nominations by 12 before Angela even gets to select her own. Uh, yeah, Chelsea told Cedric, sorry, I said MJ. Chelsea told Cedric about the Five Points Alliance that she learned about from t -Cor. Uh, Quinn does not know, or maybe he doesn't believe, that Chemo, not Angela, told Tucker about the power. Quinn is really under the impression that it was Angela that told Tucker, and that's just not factually true. And word is going around about all of Quinn's final twos. There were multiple discussions between different people. Tucker and multiple different people last night had a lot of conversations about how Quinn has four or five final twos, and, and, and people are starting to become I'm skeptical. So that is where we are at in the house, guys. I think this week is going to be very interesting, as I've said multiple times, because I think I'm really curious to see kind of the power struggle between Angela and Quinn regarding this power. So yeah, that's everything that happened last night. Anyways, if you made it to this point, I know you like the videos. Okay, so please make sure to help me drum up engagement by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing on the videos. Helps the videos to get out there more. It helps the videos to get more impressions and overall allows more people to see this content. We are on the road to 1,000 subscribers. I am less than 150 subscribers away. I am so close and I know that I could probably make it very, very, very soon. So I would love it if you guys could help me. If you guys like the content, not asking you to do anything that, that's going to be too, too challenging, but it really helps me on the back end. Most importantly, please make sure to hit subscribe and make sure you're still subscribed because people are getting unsubscribed randomly, apparently. So please make sure you're still subscribed. Also turn on the bell so you can know when I'm doing these live feed updates. I'm doing these every day. I got y'all every day. Okay. Don't let the CBS edit fool you. For those of y'all who don't watch the feeds at all, do not let the CBS edit fool you. I got you. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.